presentation of my maze game and um, the start screen start up with this where you see how to start the game how to quit the game so let's start it by doing D and then return see this creates this nice maze at the beginning we have our player here the O and we have different enemies V H and J and we have an indicator how much health we have and we have a little indicator down here saying where we are at the moment which is kind of helpful because uh, the game is asynchronous which means that even though you can see you are in position 1 1 you are in fact in position 2 1 which uh, makes it kind of hard to play the game but you will get used to it at the moment so let's look at the code you can see that first of all included the IO stream of input and output library to include math so I can use the random function and I include time hedge so I can use the time null uh, function here to create a unique random number everything at every single time I need a random number and then I have this standard uh, naming system so yes first of all we have a structure of our, of our character of our player here it include the x and y position the symbol and hp which is the health then we have a structure for the enemies uh, x and y position again and a symbol and that's all we need for the day for the enemies I have a little function here uh, explaining what is going on by when the player hit a an enemy the player will be sent back to their first location and the HP will be subtracted by one and we have our main function here and here we create our enemies which will we place them and then we give them their unique symbols and this placing system is kind of odd <laughs> being that the map is twist to, twisted around so even though this is the x and this is the y according to my integers here it is in fact the other way around so we have placed this enemy in location 9 13 9 and 13 down here where yes that's nice so and then we have a constant charge for height and height and width of how big our maze are my army is yes I have boolean which is set to false this boolean arc to control whether or not we are updating our maze then we have a move key, which I have used to control the player, and then we place the player. We place him at one one, and mark him with a zero, no, with an O, capital O. And we put uh, his HP at three, so we have three lives, uh, three health. Now we create our maze array of with a height of 18 and uh, we play we paint the maze also it's called it coded made painted I called it paint because it isn't really coding just placing a lot of hashtags and spaces around here but yeah so and then we have the start see outs as we saw uh, how to start the game and how to quit the game and then we have our while loop, which are looping until we press Q. So it's going on nearly forever. Then we have our time, time, a random seeds, which instantly and constantly creates a another value which we can use to give ourselves a random number 
but this random number is only between 1 and 2 due to the model is f2 plus 1. And then we can see uh, read the input of for the move key. So we can move the play player around later by a switch case. Yay! Then we set our update to true. So the scene would so the scene will be upgraded updated. And uh, yeah, if it's true, we uh, erase all we have on the console and placing the enemies and placing the player. And after that, creating the maze with the X and Y, which should be changed the other way around in order to get our image as we coded it here. But I have uh, coded everything so it kind of matches uh, the mirrored image and of this one. But it isn't really mirrored because seeing that this corner down here is in fact moved up here. So it kind of twisted around somewhere and this corner is still at this point. So it kind of mirrored up. Mirrored one time up here and then mirrored again over here, up here. So kind of odd. but. Yeah, it functions, and um, I have uh, programmed everything in order to match that mirrored, mirrored image. So, so then we see out the health of how much health the player have, and with a small line below it. And then we have our switch case. The switch cases here. Which um, we use to control a player. We start with the W here. We update the map. We say if the location right be right over the player is not a hashtag, we can set the current location of the player to a space and make the and move the player one step up. But if if the player's location is equal one of the enemies, then the going to play the function player hit, which put the player back to start location and subtracted the health by one, which makes the game kind of hard and challenging somehow, <laughs> because it is actually chronious and uh, you seem to it seems to happen that you hit an enemy. And then we see out the location of the player, so you can have somehow control of where you are, even though you can't really see where you are due to the asynchronous aspect. So, but um, yeah, if you hit a wall, then uh, it will be printed out you hit a wall. So you also know that. Then we have a break, and then the same comes with the other control attributes. The S is just moving downwards, the A moving to left and the D moving A moving to left and the D moving to right. And then we have a, another switch case which is for random movements. And I only use that for one of I that is for one of our enemy. And um it is the enemy which moves horizontal by one step at a time. So in case one, if we uh, if it can move to the right without hitting a hashtag, it does so and erases itself from where it were. Break. If case two, if we got two out of the random number, it just the opposite way around. And it moves to the left, and it, it, this will create a very unpredictable pattern, and uh, thereby make it a bit challenging and a bit annoying to get uh, past this enemy. Then we have another. Then we have our other enemy here. This vertical the enemy, which only moves up and down. So it starts 
by moving downwards, moving downwards, moving downwards until it hits a hashtag. And if it does so, it will say, "Okay, I can't, I can't really move any further down." What should I else do? Else, if yes, you will move five steps up. If it is not a hashtag, no. If five step up is not a hashtag, then the play the the current location will be blanked and the play will move six step up. It doesn't really make much sense, but uh, when we move it and we see it here, we can see the we. It makes perfectly sense because it's reached the end down here, and it jumps up. At that location, so we can't really move any further down. And if I have wrote, written, if uh, the hashtag uh, wasn't on place six, and we'll say, oh, there's a hashtag, I can't do it, so it'll be stuck down here. That's why. So, and then we have our last enemy, the jump. Enemy, I call it jump before. If you can see a J down here, it moves a space. It moves two spaces at a time. So it also be kind of hard to get past him because you have to go down here, get up, avoid being a hit, and then get down, and you are reaching the final goal, which is this line. And seeing that the game is asynchronous, you do not really know if you have hit it or not hit it. So, that was the J enemy jumping uh, over a space at a time. And it could be seen right here. That if we do not have a hashtag two spaces to the right, then it will jump two, space to, uh, jump two spaces. And uh, yeah, if it happens... Then it will uh, check, oh, do I have uh, 14 spaces behind me? Is the hashtag there? Nope. Then we'll jump 14 spaces behind. Rah, we jump down here. And uh, that was for the enemies. And their different attributes of how they move and behave. Then at last we uh, have uh, some if sentences about the player. Uh, if the player's uh, health equals zero, we set uh, the move key to Q and say you have lost the game and then the game quits. And if the player's Y position equals 17, which is down here, yay, congrats, you've won the game. And uh, here the loops ends and we return to zero. Yeah, so that was kind of the 